shifting our attention a little bit, transfer portal. Transfer portal, open, men's basketball. We're going to be hitting that hard over the next couple of weeks. Just like we did at the end of the football season, we're going to be hitting the basketball transfer portal hard. And one name that I didn't think I would be attracted to, not because he's not a good player, but just because I didn't, didn't think of him as a fit, I, I am now attracted to this name. And that's one that you're familiar with because he is already a Big 12 young standout. And that is Brandon Garrison from Oklahoma State. Okay. Uh, Baylor's going to need to look at the wing. I, I thought they really had two wings last year. Jacoby Walter, I consider a wing. Uh, but the only other one is Jalen Bridges. And thankfully for Baylor, he never got hurt. He played a lot of minutes. And he is a, a terrific, terrific player. I'm a huge Jalen Bridges fan. Huge. If you couldn't tell from listening to the show. Uh, however, I do think he's going to declare for the NBA draft. Uh, I think he does have a year left at his disposal if he wants it, but he showed specifically in the second half of the season, the offensive skill that will get him on an NBA roster um, or, you know, at least in the G league and being drafted by somebody because he is appearing on draft boards now late in the second round. So I, I think, and he was obviously thinking about it last year too. So I think Jalen Bridges turns pro. If he does come back, that's fantastic. That's, I think that's great for Baylor. Um, but I'm just not counting on it right now. So looking at someone to replace him on the wing. And I look at Brandon Garrison. And for those of you who have watched him play at Oklahoma state, you're thinking this is not adding up. These are not the same players at all. And you're absolutely right. You're right. They're not. Jalen Bridges, knocked down three-point shooter, can guard one through four, um, and, and became a better rebounder as his time went on at Baylor. Brandon Garrison is just a different kind of player. I mean, he is he does have he has two things specifically that I really like. First, He's got the grit and tenacity that I have been talking about and that I will be talking about throughout looking at this transfer portal. He's got that grit. He's got that tenacity. The second thing is he's got three years of eligibility left. And you can't fix the team experience problem in one transfer portal for one year, right? You can't make these guys play together for three years in one offseason. But you have someone out there who is really talented and has this eligibility left. He was a McDonald's All-American last year. And I talked about having a Mark Vital and that those guys don't grow on trees. This is about as close as you get in terms of someone who's in your backyard, has the has the experience left, not just you know playing a year in the Big 12, but has experience left for you, okay? He's got a lot of those Mark Vital qualities. He's a slasher. He's a cutter. Um, he's a good rebounder, not necessarily a great rebounder, but pretty good and can finish around the rim. Uh, a big kid too, 6'11", 245 as a freshman. Mm. And one thing that I think got better for him and my Oklahoma State friends said absolutely towards the end of the season got better, was he's a good passer. He's got a good assist rate for a big man. You'll remember, it took a while, but Mark Vidal got there. By that 2020 and 2021 teams when he had some great shooters, Vidal was a good passer. Like, truly, he was. Uh, so you look at Garrison's numbers, and you're like, okay, eight points, five rebounds, two assists. Uh, oh, the game log's not great. His production tailed off towards the end of that season. And that's true. Let me remind you again, though, a freshman on a bad team, on the worst team in the in the league. So uh, that that's another thing, you know, is, is he's young in this. He's thrown into a position where he needs to be one of the guys. I mean, he started every game basically and was playing high volume minutes for them. And still he finishes in the top 20 in the conference in offensive and defensive rebounding percentage. I, I already like that. That's something that can grow throughout. It did with vital. His passing got better. His rebounding got better. His overall defense got better. Garrison is also sixth in the conference in personal fouls. So you could say, Oh, lateral movement. Yeah, maybe, but also probably just being a freshman um, that that'll do that'll do that. Uh, but also, you know, yeah, learning the Big 12, learning the physicality. It shows that he has a commitment to defense. He's just still trying to figure it out. So I love the idea of getting Brandon Garrison to travel within or transfer, excuse me, within the conference and come play for the Baylor Bears. The other wing that I'm going to look at 
Oh, by the way, I should mention Zeke Mayo is someone you've probably heard, uh, one that's way high up on my list. Uh, he's one of the top transfers out there, South Dakota State. Uh, he's not heard from Baylor yet. He has heard from Kansas, and he is a Lawrence native. Just throwing that out there. But the other wing I'm looking at is completely different from Brandon Garrison. Garrison's got that Rico Gathers, that Mark Vital, Darlin Stone Dubar. How about that for a name? That's a great college basketball name. Darlin Stone Dubar. Okay, some Big 12 fans might remember him. He played his first season at Iowa State in 2021, uh, which were terrible Iowa State teams, and he didn't get much looks on, on that one. But he's played the last couple of years at Hofstra, okay? 6'8", junior. So as far as I could tell, I think that would mean with that COVID overlap in there, he should have two years at his disposal, but I could be wrong. It might just be one. Uh, but he has become such a more polished player at Hofstra. Uh, 18 averages, 18 points and seven rebounds on 54% shooting from the floor, 40% from three, 40% from three, each of the last two seasons. If that doesn't scream Jalen Bridges at you, I don't know what will. Okay. And he could do it inside out just like Jalen Bridges did. Uh, he, he shoots 72% in the paint. So it's not like he's just out there in the corners, although that's, that's where he can live. And, and that's where he does live in transition. He is a great transition score the kick out threes to me that sounds like Macy Oteague now I'm not saying you come in and be Macy Oteague but these things point towards it Macy was a better shot creator than he ever got credit for and a good defender too Darlin Stone Dubar is a little bit taller obviously he's got kind of a weird jump shot kind of goes off to the side little Lonzo ball in there uh, and it starts pretty low so I don't love that form but it works. And you remember Macy Oteague had a bit of that hitch in the shot that most of us, the first time we saw it, went, oh, oh, what is that? And then the ball would go in the basket a lot. So it worked on a national championship level. And you might be saying, Dubar is from Hofstra, man. I didn't even know Hofstra played basketball. Yeah, how, many, how, much, how often did you watch UNC Wilmington where Macy Oteague came from? How often did you watch Presbyterian, where Adam Flagler came from? One of the best shooters we've ever had at Baylor. Okay, so it, it's it might be late in the game for him to take that big a step, but I love what Darlin Stone Dubar can bring to you in terms of that long, athletic, knockdown shooter kind of a wing. If you want to keep in that mold, the way you had Macy Oteague, of it being a guard, not necessarily a, a wing, but close to it, and with Jalen Bridges, your natural next step is Darlin Stone Dubar. I'm just telling you the facts here. 